You can't see him on the screen, but he is sitting with us. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Good evening, Joda. Good evening. Good evening. Ashley, would you like to start with the prayer? Yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. May it be your will, God, my God, and the God of my ancestors, that you guide my eyes with the light of your Torah and save me from stumbling and making mistakes. For God gives wisdom, and fr from God's mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Amen. Amen. So, although next week is Parashat Vayakhi, I'm not going to study Parashat Vayakhi uh, necessarily. Uh, and this time I am going to also, I assume that during these two weeks, you must have gone back to our old parashiot and studied some, we, we have it on, I think both the parasha are on YouTube. For those who have gone over it and would have had questions or have studied the parasha and have questions, I would like to take this opportunity to even open uh, to these discussions that people have in mind. But let's start with the summary first. And then let's go into that. Oops. Let's see. Yeah. This goes up. Would somebody like to volunteer to read? The first line we can't see, Rabbi, because that uh, black box is that there. The black, yeah, that's what I'm trying to remove. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My computer has got hung. Oh, okay. And the task continues. Still nothing. That is one, but let's see. Oh, okay. Nothing happening in your. No, the other one was not. There are two boxes, so. <laughs> one, one is on one is on top and uh, one is just below that. Uh, let's see what. Share, I guess. The screen share, I guess. The, no, the screen is not being shared because that is. So not it. Well, teams, 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 teams. Maybe we'll go into and redo it. Open. We'll go into more. Some teams who got nothing, we got little. Not then, my WhatsApp. Give me that. Give me a second. Rabbi, I've got it on my uh, cell phone, the alias. But I don't know if they are the same. This is Rahel here. Hi, Rahel. How are you? No, we are, uh, my uh, computer just hanged. So I'm so trying cats. to re okay. reset Microsoft. I mean, look, I don't know. It's Teams. taking its time. Teams. 
Oh, there you are. Join. Can you join now? That was the let me get somebody who understands this. It's too complicated. Otherwise, you can send it to me. I will uh, share, screen, share the screen. Actually, I have it on my cell, but I don't know if it's the same thing. That's why I'm asking Arab. <coughs> now I can see. Chuda, uh, yes. Chuda. <laughs> Wait, wait, we are. Did I share? Screen share. This is not it. Open share. Open tray. And we need to. Rush out by the Okay, good. You know, Tom, break. You got the hours one double. I know. Hours one day. You got the hours one day. Hey, time. Turn gun, not a piece of pin dollar. Oh, Okay, we'll read it in the smaller version. Yeah, that's fine. It will be a little difficult, but that's the only way. I don't know what that is. I'm using my son's. Computer. But we can always uh, re increase the uh, screen. Uh, it becomes okay. Yeah. Yes. Don't worry. Then, uh, uh, yes, you can increase your screen. Yes. You can, you can see it and move it. It's okay, Ravi. Yeah. We will do do this. Uh, let it be, because otherwise, uh, okay. if you increase it, then it goes out of uh, this thing. Yes, okay. you don't. Parat gela. Chota ganda. Hey, boy, padhadiye toh. Hey, toh. Thoda samaga kar. Full screen. Nae na full screen kela toh mala hai disat no, it is going out of uh, this thing now. Out of focus, out of focus, it is. Ah, yeah, this is much better. Yeah, no problem. Okay, this is better. Same, you have bracket, same one. Yes, uh, brother. Okay, let's. That's let's, what I was uh, asking. Yeah, Rachel has it from last year. I wasn't there last year, Rabbi. I just oh. joined uh, in May. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, who would like to volunteer? Let me read it because it is too small on your screen anyway. Yaakov, first Aliyah. Yaakov lived his last 17 years in Egypt. When Yaakov sensed that he was nearing his death, he summoned Yosef and asked him to promise that he would bury him in the land of Canaan. Yosef acceded to the request. When Yaakov then fell ill, Yosef visited him, accompanied by his sons, Menashe and Ephraim. Yaakov adopts Menashe and Ephraim as his own sons. Yosef presents his two sons to to be blessed, placing Menashe, the firstborn to Yaakov's right. This is second Aliyah. Sorry, I forgot reading that. Second Aliyah, Yosef presents his two sons to be blessed, placing Menashe, the firstborn to Yaakov's right, and Ephraim to Yaakov's left. Yaakov crossed his hands, placing his right hand on Ephraim's head and left on Menashe's, Menashe, and blessed them. Third Aliyah, Yosef was disturbed that Yaakov placed his hand on Ephraim, right hand on Ephraim, and he attempted attempted to adjust his father's hands. Yaakov responded that he too will be great, but the younger brother will be greater. Yaakov blessed the two boys further, saying that all of Israel will bless invoking their names. May God make you like Ephraim and Menashe. Fourth Aliyah, 
Yaakov summoned all his sons and blessed each one with a poetic parting personal message. Reuben was chastised for his impetuousness. Shimon and Levi were rebuked for their anger, which expressed itself in the killing of the residents of Shechem. Yehuda was blessed with monarchy, success in waging war, and an abundance of wine and milk in his portion. Zebulun was blessed with success in his seafaring, sea trade endeavors. Yaakov likened Issachar to a thick bone donkey who finds service valuable. Dan was blessed with the ability to judge. Gad was blessed with bravery in the battle. Asher, Asher's blessings was abundance. Naftali was blessed with the speed of a deer. Yosef was recognized for his charm and righteousness in suffering and was showered with a variety of blessings. Benjamin was likened to six talia. Binyamin was likened to a devouring wolf. Yaakov then repeated his request to be buried in Israel in the cave of Machpelah in Hebron and he passed away at the age of 147. After an extended national mourning period, Joseph received Pharaoh's permission to carry Yaakov's body up to Israel. A huge funeral procession consisting of all the elders of Egypt as well as Yaakov's family went and buried Yaakov. After returning to Egypt, Yosef's brothers feared that now, after Yaakov has passed away, Yosef would exact revenge from them for selling him into slavery. Yosef reassured them that he harbored no ill feelings towards them. Yosef lived until the age of 110. Before passing away, he told his brothers that God would eventually take them out of Egypt and return them to the promised land. Yosef asked his brothers to promise that when that time arrived, they would carry his remains with them and enter him in Israel. So this is the last parasha of the book of Bereshit, which we will be reading this Shabbat, coming Shabbat. Just for a note, on Tuesday we have, I believe, Tuesday? Monday? No, tomorrow is Monday. Tuesday we have a fast day, 10th of, 10th of uh, this month. Tevet, tenth of Tevet, is a fast day. Just uh, occurred to me that I should share it with you, so people who will be fasting can fast on Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. So we have uh, been studying Torah for the past fifteen days. Uh, two different parashiot, parashat Miketz and parashat uh, Vaigash which we didn't really study beforehand. So if you have any questions occurred to you, any anything you all want to discuss about it, any ideas you would like to share, please uh, unmute yourself and, and uh, speak about it. I don't want to stop sharing, but uh, how do I go back? I don't know. In a minute, we'll start sharing. <laughs> I wanted to take a break from so I could look at the people, but uh, sharing good. Eh? Yeah, no? huh. Stop. So stop is okay. Uh, anyway, any questions? No questions. Nothing bothered you about the parasha. Okay, then if there are no questions, then let's move on. 
Okay. I would like to. This was one one of the parashio that um, was a lot of in my yeshiva years. It was point of contention between my understanding of things and and a lot of uh, very Haredi, very uh, ultra orthodox. Uh, friends of mine who, who uh, took the Midrash literally. So I decided that I want to bring this Midrash to show you and uh, get you, give you a flavor of what happens uh, and try to understand what the Midrash is trying to say. So Parashat Vaigash, we are going one last week's Parasha. The beginning of last week's Parasha, we see that what has happened is Binyamin has been taken back by Yosef under the false uh, pretext that he has stolen a goblet from Yosef's uh, table. And the goblet is found with in his sack. And when Binyamin is taken back, then uh, all the brothers go along with him. So they are asked to leave because Yosef says that how can I... I mean, only Binyamin is responsible for this, uh, for the uh, thievery, for the theft. And he is, he is supposed to be my slave or I'll punish him. But you are all free men. At that point, uh, Yehuda, he takes the lead and approaches uh, Yosef. Why gosh, Yosef? That is how the parasha starts. So I'm going to read the line in Hebrew. Why gosh, Elam Yehuda? Sorry, not Yosef. Vaigash elav Yehuda. Then Yehuda went up to him, Vayomer vi Adoni, and said, Please, my lord, Yadaberna abdecha devar beozne Adoni, let your servant appeal to my lord. And I mean, Ozne Adoni is in your ear. Like, give me a personal uh, uh, attention. Ve al and do not be impatient and do not be angry with your servant because you are equal of Pharaoh. Okay. So here you see Yehuda very tactfully approaching yourself with the kind of respect you give respect to a king and requesting him for a second hearing that he should give him attention that he wants to speak something to him okay and the second time then he goes on after this the discussion goes on where yosef yakov uh, sorry yehuda tells yosef that you remember the last time when we came and he re repeats the whole story you asked us who are you and we told you that we are 11 brothers and one of them is no longer with us. And, and we have an old father and the, the youngest son is with the father. Right? So you asked us to bring the youngest son. And he very emotionally moves Yosef to a point where Yosef starts crying. So that is the, that is the context of this Midrash. But what is really happening in the Midrash is a different take altogether. Listen to the Midrash. Midrash Rabbah. Um, this is a second explanation of something which was uh, continuous. So, second explanation ab about Vaigga Shela. Another explanation. And Yehuda approached. That is what it means. Vaigga Yehuda. This is what it means when it was said with divine inspiration through Shlomo. Wisdom gives strength to the wise. Who did Shlomo? Uh, who did Shlomo? say this referring to he he only said it in reference to Yosef HaSaddiq so in the book of um, Proverbs this statement is mentioned that wisdom gives strength to the wise that is what King Solomon has written wisdom gives strength to the wise and the Midrash takes a leap from that 
particular statement says about whom is this written shlomo was writing it about yosef hasadi about yosef about what we were discussing rabbi yohanan said excuse me at the time that yosef took binyamin and said to his brothers he in whose possession the goblet was found shall be my slave yosef said you will seize binyamin and there will be peace in father's household because yosef says i will take binyamin and you go back in peace so he says you will take binyamin and there will be peace how is that possible there are two ways of understanding this you told us go back in peace to your father what peace is there if you have seized binyamin like i explained this now right or the second understanding is you think that we will act peacefully towards you if you seize binyamin we will fight you to get him back immediately yehuda got angry and roared a loud voice and his voice went 400 parsa an average person can walk 10 parsa in one day only 10 parsa so you can understand 400 parsa is how far that is how loudly he screamed okay um there is one request if you could spotlight me ashley okay let's go back to the midrash you think that we will act peacefully towards you if you see is benjamin we will fight to get him back immediately yehuda got angry and roared with a loud voice and his voice went 400 parsa an average person can walk 10 parsa in one day until khushim son of dan heard not he was deaf according to the midrash khushim son of dan was deaf but he could sort of feel the vibration of of yehuda's voice scream and jumped from the land of canaan and came next to yehuda and they both roared and the land of egypt was about to overturn eov said about them the roar of a lion and the roar of a cub the roar of a lion refers to yehuda about whom it is written yehuda is a young lion and the sound of a cub is khushim son of dan as both of them are compared to a lion yehuda as well as dan as it says and to dan he said dan is a young lion the teeth of lions cubs are confounded these are yosef's mighty men that when yehuda got angry all of their teeth fell out now what is this midrash doing the midrash is saying that there are some phenomenal powers that yehuda had yehuda could scream a scream that could scare egypt then dan son who was sitting in israel in in canaan at that time because only these 11 brothers had come down 12 brothers or 11 brothers right had come down for this is the second time they had come down right and so he heard yehuda and he knows that this is yehuda's scream so he takes a jump in one jump he can he can cover from canaan to egypt and then together they will roar and together they roar and the whole of egypt is about to just over overturn maybe a, a earthquake or whatever the midrash is imagining right now with this then it goes on to say that the whole army of egypt basically he is like <clears throat> their teeth fell out because of the this powerful <laughs> uh, scream now what do you make of a midrash like this what is it trying to achieve for my friends in the yeshiva they take it literally which means that yakov yeah, avinu was a super power superman super when he went around uh, to haran he rolled the stone by his power he alone could roll the stone otherwise everybody had what to get that sora says that they waited for everybody to get there and then they rolled the stone which means that they needed 25 people to roll the stone right and 
at this juncture, you need a minyan in the synagogue. Mm -hmm. um, that one, uh, one person, Yaakov Avinu, stands over there, rolls the stone, 25 people strength he has in himself. That is how it, it has to be. So Yaakov, he fathers children who are as strong. So you see Yehuda, he can, you have Shimon and Levi going and massacring a whole, a whole uh, tribe. tribe of Shechem, right? All the whole city of Shechem. So the people of Shechem, no doubt, were in pain or whatever, but certainly they had resistance and they could bring them down. Then you have this Midrash, which tells their superpower, they can jump and from one, one country to another. They can scream and the whole country can take a fall. And the Midrash continues. I was trying to search for other Midrash. But when they scream like this, then the children of Yosef, Ephraim and Menashe, also get into the, the uh, competition. So they scream back. <laughs> they scream back. And, and in, in that Midrash, which I was trying to search, but I didn't find, uh, Yehuda and, and uh, Hushim, they are shocked. They said, only if we have these superpowers, how can how can an Egyptian also, you know, compete with us and be better than us, like sort of. But in the whole whole uh, competition, what is happening is Egypt is getting uh, overturned, sort of, right? But this is the midrash. Now, what is the what is the midrash midrash's role? What is the Midrash coming to teach us? In my personal opinion, in my very puny opinion, I don't think that it is supposed to be taken literally. And that's what my argument was with my friends when I was in Yeshiva. This is not supposed to, uh, supposed to play that part that you think that our ancestors were uh, well, supermen. <laughs> but, uh, but a lot of, lot of uh, Jews around the world do think like that. So I won't say that, uh, I mean, I, there is no way you can prove a Midrash, yes or no. So, but from other, other things, like how this Midrash is, I mean, you read the main text, it says that he was very polite and he was trying to get his ear and his attention and he was asking him for pardon. You, you, you read a different story in the Torah. So what is the Midrash trying to do? Who would like to attempt this question? I mean, Torah is not false, right? They cannot just give us false uh, falsehood <laughs> that this was what happened, you know. So what? Where, where do we understand that this is true? How do we understand that this is a myth? That is the question. Tough, huh? Nobody wants to try? Yeah, Ashley. You want to you want to try maybe? I think David David wants to say something. David? Yeah, I, I will try. Yes, David, please. Yeah. I think um, it's got to do with that phrase, wisdom gives strength to the wise. Yeah. So it means that, uh, you know, Judah had the strength to even overturn Yosef and take away Benjamin by force if he wanted to, in a way. Uh, so, but he is. In his wisdom, he is uh, he is not going the direction, you know, of using his strength, but trying to request. Uh, because I think he also loves his brother Benjamin. Also, I think that turn has happened because earlier they were not liking each other in some form, but then there is this liking towards Benjamin. So, yeah, but it's got to do with his understanding about. The wisdom that gives strength not to be aggressive. Right. Nice. 
Yes. Certainly, wisdom gives strength to the wise. That is the main phrase of the, or the beginning phase of that Midrash. I really didn't even connect these two the ideas. But uh, as you put it, there is some idea that restraint, which comes from wisdom, to some extent has the capacity to have strength. You know, sometimes it is not always that you, you have to, you know, show that you are a he-man to, to show that you are strong. It is uh, in the Pirkei Avod. Uh, who is who? Who is the strong? Uh, who is the person who is strong? Ezehu uh, Gibor Ha Koveshata Itzro, the one who controls his yetzer, one who can, you know, pull back the reins, who, who can control himself in the times of such uh, such uh, I mean, sort of when you are instigated or whatever. That is the person who is strong. So that is a very nice read, I think. Very nice. So then what we would have to say is, it is as if that this is what they would have wanted to do in their imagination, but they control themselves. Any more ideas? Maybe there is a Kabbalistic take on it. I don't know. Uh, but it, I'm sure there is. I there is no no questions about it. With the 400 parsad, four is four, 400 is a, a multiple of 40. Four worlds. Uh, it has to it has to have something which I have not studied. But that that is where the midrash is really trying to hint. But on a general on a general note, what I think is, see. Uh, I remember this very interesting movie because I could relate with it uh, when I saw the movie. And the name of the movie is Kash. Anybody has seen this movie with uh, Jackie Sharoff in the lead? Jackie Sharoff, and I think it was. Um, Bobby G. Hero and Gone. Dimple, Dimple Kapadia. They have a conflict. Uh, they are about to get a divorce or they are divorced. I don't remember exactly uh, what the, that was the storyline. Uh, but but there is a father-son uh, bonding in that movie. Some, it, it is a beautiful movie that I remember from my uh, college years, you know. And uh, the father is like a actor who has gone uh, out of vogue so he remembers his you know days when people sort of <laughs> worshipped him <laughs> idolized him and uh, and his his talk with his son is like this you know i i am the he man i am whatever you know but that that son idolizes his father he loves his father and all the time it is it is like you know this he looks up to his father because of that kind of uh, talk the father has with the son anybody has seen this movie nobody nobody remembers anyway but there is in parenting there is uh, there is a important aspect where you want to build up your image. You want to build up not your image, but the the self confidence of the child, or that the child recognizes that it comes from a, a very you know noble past or a very important. That I say that I am from the chosen people. What does that make <laughs> when I am growing up, right? But what does that make uh, make me think? What does that uh, inspire in a person when a person understands that this is the responsibility that is showered on you. What does what does it? Uh, it does something very important, right? It although it is not it is not pride, but it is self self image, and that building of the self image in one in in the olden times, how was this self image made? 
these were the stories that we read to create a self image of the jewish the you know the bigger jewish uh, ego <laughs> or, or we would say that the 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 yeah. community national ego and without that if you don't think that india is great right then your army will not be able to achieve whatever they are able to achieve or whoever whoever whichever country does not have these uh, these positive images it won't build the structure for because all these structures are really imaginary right there are no borders around the country there are no such things and similarly the jewish people is also a figment of our imagination although it is there in our genes but we have to imagine it that we are a part of these people and we are bonded and even though i i look a little dark skin and the american counterpart is a little white skin who is coming from russia is uh, white uh, totally white and we are all one right what connects us what what joins us and what what gives us our our uh, ability to be one is this imaginary idea that is built in us right that's why i can i can make a minyan with so many different with a ethiopian and with a uh, moroccan and a uh, ashkenazi jew right the even translation is different their praying is different their everything is different but we can we can relate why because we have this imaginary understanding that we are one right great and also we similarly then we have we have to build this this uh, because till we come to spiritual truths to understand what our potential is is a long journey but to begin with when we are immature when we are small when we are young what what really makes it work is that we understand yes i come from a great father my father was x y z you know he defeated my dad had stories like this you won't believe but we when we were kids he, he had he used to have stories where he had uh, wrestling matches with uh, i Dara don't know dara singh Dara-Sing, yeah no there were no limits only to imaginary uh, stories like that but that is what built in us that that capacity that oh we are something special and we need to you know and that is so important for and that is exactly what i think this midrash does it in the jewish psyche in their in our uh, unconscious subconscious whatever that is okay. as a collective it it builds and tells us that yes it is possible to be superman don't <laughs> take it lightly your father four fathers did it and we we can then aim to this but as i said this is kabbalistic the super power is not in the physical world and that is not the idea and again then that relates to restraint because the whole thing is that the power is about restraint the power is about being a real man not because you can fight it out but because then you can you can deal with things wisely interesting but i i I, yes, i have to tell you there will be a lot of lot of very ultra orthodox people who will think that this is the reality on the ground yeah. that is how how it was and uh, yakov started from beersheba one one leap in betel and the second leap, leap in haran yeah that is also midrash that is also midrash yes and that's why this fellow kushim could leap back into I mean, leap outside of israel into into um, mesrain egypt okay we'll take another this was like the the chapter we missed out why gosh but that was an interesting midrash i would like to bring another idea let's uh, and this is also on some some philosophical idea where where the midrash tries to uh, teach us some some concepts here so the source material is from genesis 50 this is in our parasha this is immediately after they bury uh, yakov avinu in israel they bring him back to the land of canaan in hebron after he passes away there is a period where they are you know embalming him then they bring him to israel there is a seven day morning they bury him and everything and then they go back 
When Yosef's brother saw that their father was dead, they said, what if Yosef still bears a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrong that we did him? So they sent his, this message to Yosef. Before his death, your father left this instruction. So shall you say to Yosef, forgive, I urge you, the offense and the guilt of your brothers who treated you so harshly. Therefore, please forgive the offense of the servants of the God of your father. And Yosef was in tears as they spoke to him. His brothers were to him, them, uh, went to him themselves, flung themselves before him and said, we are prepared to be your slaves. But Yosef said to them, have no fear. Am I a substitute of God, for God? Besides, although you intended me harm, God intended it for good. So as to bring about the present result to the survival of many people. And so, fear not, I will sustain you and your children. Thus he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. So here is a real situation with the brothers, right? Because the brothers think that how will Yosef punish us in front of our father? And that's why Yosef is being merciful. But once Yaakov Avinu passes on, now Yosef is the king, is the viceroy, is second in charge. He will uh, punish us. He will, he is going to get vengeance. So, what do they do? They send this message, saying that Yaakov send us. Right? What do you think was the message true? Would it be that Yaakov knew about the sale of Yosef? Did the child? That, that, that is one question that we need to ask. Did the brothers really inform Yaakov at some point in time that this is what they did and that's why Yosef is alive? We really don't know. Or was it just a white lie? Right? That is what the Midrash is going to uh, deal with. And Yosef returned to Egypt. They said, what if Yosef still bears a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrong that we did him? Rabbi Levi and Rabbi Ishaq disagreed on the interpretation. Rabbi Levi said, he did not invite them to dine with him. So, the first question is, why are the brothers questioning this? So the rabbis don't think that it is just because like what I am saying. Now the father is dead and uh, there must be some other impetus, some, some other reason that is causing this, this response from the brothers. So this is the argument they have. Thank you. The first rabbi, Rabbi uh, Levi, says... He did not invite them to dine with him. So normally, probably he was asking the brothers to join him for a meal or whatever. Now he did not invite invite him, invite them. So from there, they figure that Yosef is uh, acting strange and he may be wanting to uh, punish them. Rabbi Tanfuma said he intended nothing other than for the sake of heaven. So Rabbi Tanhuma, he believes that Rabbi Levi is right. So this is an imaginary thing, right? Yeah, Rabbi, Levi, because Rabbi he... Levi does not invite. So Rabbi Tanhuma is saying he intended nothing other than for the second by his action in that he thought in the past father seated me above Yehuda and he is to be the ancestor of a king and above Reuven who is the firstborn. And now is it not reasonable that I should sit above them? Is it not reasonable that I should sit above them? But they did not say such. But rather, what if Yosef still bears a grudge? Okay. So here, Rabbi Tanhuma is giving an interpretation of why Yosef did not. Rabbi uh, Tanhuma is trying to explain positively why Yosef really, really he, the truth is he did not 
invite them to dine because he was in a dilemma. Yosef was the eleventh son, right? Earlier, when they came and sat for a meal with the father, then the, the he was uh, what is he saying? He did not invite. Oh, sorry, where is this? Uh, in the past, father seated me above Judah and Reuben. So earlier, when my father had the call because I was the king or the viceroy, I was seated in in honor over. Yehuda also was now the in charge of the household, and Reuben was the first one. But now, if I invite them and I make myself magnanimous, I give them myself honor in front of my older brother, eldest brother, and the guy with the beracha for kingship, then I will I will be able to. I, I mean, it won't be right, right? So how will and me being a king and I, I have a staff and I everybody understands that I need to give myself honor. It is better that I don't invite them and we don't have this dispute. Then, um, so that was the first one. But they did not say such. But rather, this is the second opinion of Rabbi Itzchak. What if Yosef still bears a grudge? So. And now it is not reasonable that I should sit above them, but they did not say such. But rather, what if Yosef still bears a grudge? So, because of such behavior of Yosef, they still decide, they say the brothers say, what if Yosef still bears a grudge? Now, the second opinion, Rabbi Iskak said, he went and peered into that pit while in Canaan to bury their father. When when they were in Canaan, bury their father, Yosef went out of his way to to the pit where he was um, thrown by his brothers and he peered at the pit. So all that came back to them that he is still thinking about what we did to him and they will, he is going to punish us. And they commanded to Yosef saying, commanded means instructed over here, like we read in the original, instructed, commanded, the Hebrew word is the same for it. Your father instructed, your father commanded, it was taught. Rabban Shimon Gamliel says, peace is, peace is great as even the tribes, that is the brothers, spoke invented words in order to bring peace. This is a nice way of saying that they lied, right? They spoke invented words in order to bring peace between Yosef and the tribes. This means Yosef and themselves. This is what it is written. And they commanded to Yosef saying, your father commanded before his death. And where did he command? We do not find the command. Such you shall say to Yosef. He said, thus my brother suspect me. And his brothers also went. They said to him, you wanted one. You mean to be yours for slave? Here we are all your slaves. Okay. Am I back with all 20 minutes now? One second. Okay. Let's see if it is charging or it isn't. A second, guys. Anyway, you all also are seeing a black back black spot on your uh, screen. Or yes, or yes. Or yes. Or yes. We can see that. But anyway, we are we are done for the midrashim. So I'm going to. So it's gone now. Oh, good. This will help. Uh, 
that's much better. Okay, so here we have the Midrash, which basically is bringing to light when can we apply. Amen. Is it okay to lie in from the brother's perspective? What is happening? They are in a fix. They think that they have, they know that they have done uh, something terribly wrong against Yosef. And Yosef is in position to get back to them. And now their father, who was the uh, sort of a magen, a shield, is no more. So they decide that they are going to, in his name, they are going to lie. And tell them that that is the third opinion. Question is, if were they lying or not? That is the question, right? Again, you will go to a lot of Haredi people. They will say, what nonsense you're talking. If they said that their father instructed, then they were they were being truthful. They must have told the father and the father. But they so are there different. is a midrash about this. Yeah. That, that they went to the father. The midrash says that uh, the... the the Torah, Torah is a book of truth. So everything written in the Torah is truth. So when they say that they went to the father and told him, so they are speaking the truth. And it gives, it says that uh, they went to, like the Midrash says that they went to Yosef, that they went to Yaakov and explained him. Hmm. When Yosef was, like Yosef told them to come to Israel to bring their father, they went to their father. And told him the whole story because otherwise, how could he know that what happened and how it happened? Okay. So they told him all the story and everything what happened and how they were responsible for it. Mm -hmm. And then the father told them that uh, oh, he will he will forgive you. Otherwise, tell him that I told him right. to forgive. And then when Yosef comes to know about this incident, he cries because he is uh, hurt by the fact that his father knows that his brothers hmm. plotted against him and right. his brothers were like culprit in the eyes of their father. So he's hurt about this and therefore hmm. he cries. So okay. this is also a Midrash there which explains why he's crying and why they are telling this thing and why it's happening. Right. Nice. So so you see there are Midrashim to both both the effect. What, this Midrash we, we are studying just now is saying that no, this was invented words. They were lying, uh, but for the sake of peace. And the Midrash is trying to teach us that for the sake of peace, it is okay to even you know, invent words and and uh, change change the reality of things. Now, uh, I will another Midrash. Uh, which counters so there is there is one place in um, when Yaakov Avinu falls sick right I'm not going to search for it but you can see that there is Yaakov Avinu falls sick he sends a message to Yosef please call Yosef so the question is why was it necessary for Yaakov to call Yosef Yosef is in the same I mean he's probably not in Goshen but as a son, he was visiting his father. He must be father. He must be. And it was not that Yaakov was like sick. Uh, but Yaakov feels that he is about to die. And he, he wants to uh, put things straight. So he's not like sick, sick, sick. He is in a, in a position to talk, give a beracha. He gives blessings to all his um, children. But he sends a message to ya, uh, Yosef. So the Midrash over there. Is, you know why he needs to send a call to Yosef? Because Yosef never came to Yaakov Avinu, although he was in Egypt. So the Midrash asks, why was it that after calling the father from Canaan and after uh, caring for him and everything, why was it that he was not going to meet his father regularly? Because he was afraid. What if the father asks him, how did you come to Egypt? <laughs> what will he say? So, if Yaakov Avinu asked one of their nice chats, ask him, so Yosef, tell me, how did you end up here? What will he say? 
Did he say that my brother sold me? He doesn't know the brothers have sold him. He doesn't know the brothers have told him. He, have, he has no idea. So what is the best way out? He said, I am busy. I am too busy taking care of my uh, Pharaoh's role, whatever responsibility as a viceroy. So that was the sad. I mean, so Midrash, again, we don't know exactly. Maybe what happened is the family knew exactly what happened. And he was coming regularly. But in this instant, uh, Yaakov decided to send a message to him. But the Midrash picks up on this. And says that there is a there, there is a very sensitive situation here, and Yosef is in that if his father is not told, and he is asked, he can't lie, he can't. He, there is no way out that he will have to otherwise blame his brothers, but he prefers not to have his loving father uh, uh, or a company than to blame his brothers. Anyway, so that is one midrash. But again, so you see here that. That Hamim through these midrashim teach us very important philosophical ideas. Ideas where how how ethics how important relationships are for in terms of when you are judging things where where peace is more important than than uh, truth, where lying is sometimes acceptable when you want to make peace. And these ideas, because what we really, you know, when we think about morality in general, that everything has to be moral and everything has to be black and white. But the Hakamim never thought like that. They knew that life, life is life. And there are incidences where you will need to find, you know, a better of the two evils. You know, you want to you want to lie or you want to you want to break the break. The relationship and the peace of the so that is again coming back to the whole idea of wisdom that wisdom is the strength and it is only through wisdom really that we understand how to deal with the situation that is how torah understood everything it is never a black and white reality it it is why the torah has a oral tradition that you have to have something which is which was malleable but what what moves that what you needs that material is not your ego and is your your selfish motives but it should be your touch your connect with that aspect which is the divine to to sort of you know infuse it with the wisdom we call it wisdom but that is the divine inspiration really right okay any more additions? Okay, that's uh, basically the uh, midrashim uh, that I selected for. Any questions? Any thoughts? Comments? Critique? Uh, Please, be, feel free to. Uh, yeah. Uh, this. Uh, this uh, midrash also uh, focuses a lot on uh, Yosef forgiving his brothers. So forgiveness. Yes. 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 You know, forgiveness. Uh, That's for... why Yosef was the Sadiq. Yeah. Yeah. Shortcut to becoming a Sadiq is forgiving. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, in my last classes, if you will go back, I had in fact uh, come to the conclusion that uh, no doubt uh, forgiveness, today we use the word, right? But repentance and forgiveness in the spiritual spheres, right? They were like Adam, he never asked for forgiveness. Probably there are midrashim that that say again that Adam is the one who wrote the uh, uh, the psalm for Shabbat when once he was introduced to this idea. But we don't see that Adam really asks for forgiveness. Neither does Cain, and it goes on and on till only Yosef 
Yosef is the first individual in the history of humanity. Till Yosef, all whatever is known, there is some kind of um, you know conflict, um, conflict, uh, being, being <laughs> or appeasement. You you even see with Yaakov Avinu. Yaakov Avinu is sending gifts to his brother. Now, he doesn't say, I am sorry that I took your uh, blessings. blessings. What, Never what did he come to his father and say, I am sorry. No. Yeah, yeah, the first time, forgiveness, or, or no, nobody, even the brothers, to directly never say it. For, but they, they do, in their conversations, they say, God, is, God has got us, uh, you know, and uh, our our crime has been caught or whatever, you know. But it is the first time that forgiveness happens through Yosef. That Yosef, although whatever is done, terrible 21 years in his life that he has to bear because of this crime of the brothers, but he totally forgives them. He checks it out that have they changed. He gives them an opportunity to, you know, even sell Benjamin sort of to slavery. But but they have changed, and once he recognizes that they they didn't intend or they have changed their tracks, and he recognizes probably even when they did it to him, there may have been some other motivations, which which is what what it was, right? So so he pardons them, and that is the big bigness, the 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 largeness, large heart of uh, Joseph that makes him a sadiq, right? And that what that is what brings the, the ability to forgive on the on the sphere, the human sphere. Till then, there was no forgiveness or no repentance per se. I mean, the idea must have been around, but nobody was doing it. Even historians are amazed by the fact that only the Torah has this idea. Other uh, literature doesn't have this idea. Of forgiveness or forgiving. Okay. It's quite late in India, so I'm not going to. If any questions, please quickly ask. Otherwise, we'll call it a day. Right then. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rabai. Thank you very much, Judah. Really thank, really, thank you. really, thank you both for putting this much of effort uh, to take the classes every week. It's uh, yeah, really lovely. Thankful. It is really very uh, knowledgeable. This, this, very this knowledgeable. This Tuesday <laughs> being a fry, uh, Yeah, we will not have any. Uh, yeah. Kabbalah yeah. class won't be there. But yes, we will yes, have we the that. class on Sunday. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Rabai. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank, thank you, everybody. You. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Ashley. Thank God you bless you. Thank you. Ashley, did you check out what, what is happening?